Hello. 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 Good afternoon. Later, I'm going to go right here. You got a spark with this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are you ready? All right. Good afternoon. On August 21st, 2022, just after 2 p.m., the Oakland Police Department responded to an egregious crime scene in the 1000 block of Fifth Avenue, an unknown, uh, an area known as Little Saigon. A female victim later identified a 60 year old Lily Zhu of Oakland was exiting her parked vehicle when an older white vehicle, four door Lexus, pulled up to, Zhu, to Zhu's vehicle. An unknown individual exited the vehicle and approached Zhu. That person fired multiple rounds, striking her. The individual got back into the Lexus and fled that scene. Zhu sustained multiple gunshot wounds and was transported to a local hospital where she succumbed to her injuries and was pronounced deceased. Over the last two months, the Oakland Police Department's homicide investigators have worked this investigation tirelessly, diligently following up on dozens of tips from our community and exploring all investigative leads. Today, I am pleased to announce the arrest of two individuals who are responsible for this heinous crime which sent shockwaves throughout our community. During our investigation, we uncovered substantial evidence supporting the arrest of 73-year-old Nelson Chia of Oakland for the orchestration of what appears to be a murder for hire, and 33-year-old Hashim Basin of Stockton for his involvement in this homicide. This is not a case about race. This is a case about greed. Some try to use this case as a way of divide in our community. My hope is that we can come together and support the family and the community as we have all experienced this tragedy. This was a senseless murder of a prominent community leader. Lily Zhu, that shouldn't have happened. Now we need to place the blame where it belongs, at Mr. Chia. I first would like to thank the dedicated men and women of the Oakland Police Department for their hard work in making sure that we were able to bring these individuals to justice. But I'd also like to acknowledge the partnerships that we had in this investigation. The California Highway Patrol, the California Department of Justice, the Alcohol uh, and Tobacco and Firearms ATF, as well as the Federal Bureau of Investigations, the FBI, and most importantly, the Alameda County District Attorney's Office that has been a key partner in, throughout this investigation. Next, I'd like to have Alameda County District Attorney Nancy O'Malley come and provide information on charging and arraignment for Mr. Chia and Basin. Thank you, Chief, very much. Uh, as the Chief reported, two arrests have been made in the killing of Dr. Lily Zhu. The investigation is continuing, but it is anticipated that my office will file charges against Nelson Chia alleging murder, a violation of Penal Code Section 187 with a special circumstance of 190.2A1, which is murder with the intentional and carried out for financial gain. We also anticipate filing charges against Hashim Bassan, alleging murder, also a violation of Penal Code Section 187, and the enhancement of the Penal Code Section 12022.53D, which is the intentional and personal use of a firearm. We are reviewing all of the evidence, and that could, and I mean that could, result in special circumstances charged against the individual Besson, including the violation of 190.2A1, also murder for financial gain, and a violation of 190.2A15, which is that the defendant intentionally killed the victim by means of lying in wait. We anticipate filing charges in court on Monday. Since the investigation is ongoing, 
we will not and cannot discuss the specific facts of this case at this time, uh, but we'll do so once the charges are filed. I particularly want to give great thanks to the Oakland Police Department and to the investigators who have worked tirelessly, as the Chief said, worked tirelessly to solve this crime and other murder, murders and serious felony crimes that are happening in the city of Oakland. I also want to acknowledge my own staff who have been working side by side with the Oakland Police Department to not only solve the murders occurring in Oakland, but developing necessary evidence so those responsible can be charged and brought to justice. I will add that today we held our 20th uh, an anniversary of the Day of Remembrance, where we honor those who have been killed as a result of domestic violence or by an intimate partner. Today, we read 222 names of individuals who have been killed since 1996. Ms. Zhu's name will be added to our next list, to our list, and her name will be read, and she will be honored at our Day of Remembrance in 2023. Appreciate your time and attention to this, uh, to this heinous crime that occurred, senseless crime. And I just echo the words of the chief that this crime was a personal crime committed against the victim and not a crime of race or a crime of hate other than the hatred that the defendant uh, had against his girlfriend. Thank you very much. We're going to open up one minute questions. We can only say so much. So if you have a question, please raise your hand. Let me go over here first. Um, District Attorney O'Malley, you said that the, um, would you classify this as more of a, I mean, there is financial gain, as you mentioned, but domestic violence. The partner, you, the uh, suspect is characterized as a former partner. Did I hear that right? Uh, I believe they were in relationship. Unclear whether the relationship had ended. And I'll just be clear that domestic violence isn't just punching or physical injury. Domestic violence comes in all forms. Uh, terrorizing the victims of domestic in a domestic relationship. Um, murder for financial gain. So we really expand the definition of domestic violence in this case. Uh, Chief, uh, two part question. The first part, you mentioned greed. Can you give us the motive uh, for this? Uh, more details. Secondly, surveillance footage. Uh, we all saw the footage. We saw the uh, suspect car, the white Lexus, waiting there for about 13 minutes before yep. the victim's car pulled up. Can you talk to us about how big that video played a role specifically in helping you guys solve that case? So uh, motive and then the footage. Yeah, I, I won't get into motive. I'll, I'll, I'll let uh, the, the district attorney, like she said, will bring out more information as time goes on. This is obviously still an open investigation, uh, so I won't get into the motive. Uh, but I will say that from the from the day we had seen the initial video, our investigators who have a lot of experience in investigating these type of events uh, clearly felt like there was something that they needed to look deeper into. Uh, this did not seem to be uh, the typical robbery related homicide. There seemed to be something off about the way in which it happened based on our initial look at the video. So I think that did, uh, with having experienced investigators, I think they, you know, begin to follow up on potential uh, uh, motives, if you would, or looking deeply into the circumstances around this particular homicide. And I think, you know, that led us to really begin our work with the district attorney's office to further that investigation. So, uh, so I do think the initial video was helpful for us because it did help us better understand what it is that we were seeing there and it wasn't normal for what we would expect in a situation like that. Where was Chia arrested? We saw the video this morning at the first block. But where, where did that happen? Was that here at OPD that we saw that video? Yes, we arrested Chia at his home. Uh, we did have, uh, have units uh, arrest him. At, well, he was arrested here at the PAB, I'll say, but we did bring him down from his home. What's the connection between the two suspects, Chia and the other individual? How did they meet? How did they know each other? What's the connection? Yeah. There? I can't speak to any of that at this point. Uh, like the district attorney said, it's, it's still an open investigation. We'll let the district attorney do what they need to do in terms of charging. And then I think the facts of this case will come out at some point. Are you able to talk about the additional suspects? Obviously, you have the shooter, you have the guy who's orchestrating the thing. 
Yeah, I think you heard the district attorney. I hate to echo that again. Uh, she, Like she said, uh, it is an open investigation. We have not concluded this investigation. Uh, so there's more uh, there's more to come when it comes to this investigation. And I think uh, a lot of the questions that you have will be answered at some point. So, right here. Um, district attorney, do we know when and where the suspect will appear in court? It is anticipated that they'll be in court on Monday or Tuesday of next week. We, in, we expect to file charges on Monday. So, I, obviously, again, <laughs> I can't speak to the investigation. Um, I can say that, like I spoke of earlier, we were exploring uh, all information that was given to us. And so I just think it's a, a coming upon us to do a thorough and comprehensive investigation. And if we had leads, we followed up on those leads. And so uh, I think, you know, at some point you will know much more about this investigation, but we're not able to talk about it right now. All right, two more questions that don't involve the investigation because Chief can't answer those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, this case remind, reminds me of the Mr. Fong's case. Yep. It looks like a robbery. And everyone, uh, I first thought it's you know similar robbery case. So how the investigators uh, can you know find another direction to uh, to the boyfriend? Yeah. Yeah, I think obviously you know the Fong case you know was look similar but was much different and i think to, to the eye of trained investigators and district attorneys and others that do this for a living they you know when they begin to look at these investigations they can see where there is some irregularities if you would things that typically wouldn't happen in a normal sort of robbery related homicide and so i think you know we look thoroughly at these cases we don't even though there's pressure from the outside, the public, for us to make a, an instantaneous judgment about what happened, I think that's why we do investigations, because it's important that we are thorough, that we, you know, identify evidence, right? Things need to be, you know, we need evidence to support these theories that people have. And I think when we look deeper into this investigation, we've seen that it wasn't as clear as what people thought it was. And so I think that required additional investigation. And I really do appreciate the thoroughness of our investigators that really begin immediately following up on those things. All right, Alice, last question. Um, quick question. Purple ribbons are for Day of Remembrance. Was Ms. Zhu, Dr. Zhu, a mom? Do we know? She has a son, and our the Victim Witness Division of my office has been working very closely with her son, adult as we son? do with her adult son, as we do with all victims of crime, even if the crime's not solved, uh, that we provide those services which can include and generally does include paying for funerals and other services that we offer to those who have been victimized. Um, and I will say today is for Day of Remembrance, but October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So we're coming to the end. Um, but as I said, every year for the last 20 years, we've been honoring those who have been killed as a result of, inter of, of uh, violence by a partner, intimate partner, or as a result of domestic violence. Sorry, Harry. I'm sorry. One, one, hey, just to clarify something, the, uh, is the uh, financial enhancement is that a is that an enhancement or another charge? And the lying and laying in wait, or is that also known, considered an ambush? Uh, it can be. Okay. It doesn't have to be. But are they but enhancements or other charges? They are not other charges. They are enhancements, but they both are special circumstances. So if proved, the punishment can be life without possibility of parole or even the death penalty. Thank you guys very much. Uh, please hold off the leave until our guests leave first, Chief. Additional offers? Appreciate your time. <laughs>